Hallelujah. Let me start first by saying that I bring you greetings from Nigeria. On behalf of myself, Bishop Olale and uh, Pastor Kaine, who, are, who traveled from Lagos here. Bishop Olale, We want to say to you that, that we are blessed to be here. Let me first start by apologizing ahead of time. Because I'm going to share something with us tonight. I don't know the kind of anointing that God has put over my ministry. But when I start sharing, there are three reactions that I always get. And that's why I'm apologizing ahead of time. Tonight you are either going to be glad or else you are going to be sad. And some get angry. So let me apologize ahead of time to those who will get angry. Praise the Lord. 14 years ago, God gave a vision to the apostle. Apostle Gitwaza. Africa arise was that vision. Africa Haguruka, Nidio Jari Joerequa. Fourteen years ago, Imyaka Chuminini Shize, God gave me a vision to Nanja Hari Yerequa, Imana Yamai. For many nights, I could not sleep in Nigeria. Murin Nigeria, Ahonari in Dicho Jihe, Namaza Majoro, Meshina Sinzira. I saw visions of bloodshed. Nawonye, Amayerequa, Yokuvisha, Amara Sokaban. I saw terrible things that would not allow me to sleep. As a result of the visions I saw, I had to move a bit out of the pastoral ministry. I began to tour the entire country called Nigeria. The vision I saw was that there was going to be bloodshed that could be prevented. The bloodshed was going to be coming from religion. Hiding under the cloak of Islam, there were going to be terrible things happening. As I began to tour around the country, from the year 2000, 2001, 2002, many of you thought we were talking rubbish. Because there was no violence in sight on the surface. By 2004, some people were still laughing at us. But when God speaks a word, His word will never fall to the ground. All of a sudden, to many Nigerians, it took them by surprise. Something called Boko Haram emerged and began to trouble the nation. And I had warned them from the year 2000 that there will come a time when there will be suicide bombers in Nigeria. Now, to God be the glory, I believe that peace will still reign in Nigeria. But for peace to reign in Nigeria, 
We are going to have to join hands with people like Apostle Gitwaza. God raised Nigeria as a nation, not for itself. But to be a blessing to the rest of Africa as well. But Nigeria has not done that for a long time. Now, whether Nigeria likes it or not, joining hands with you here in Rwanda, which is the womb of what God is doing, working with South Africa, working with the Congo, Walking together. The day that God promised Africa from the beginning. That day of joy will become a reality. But until then, we have to learn something. We must learn to submit ourselves to God. Africa will submit itself to God. Africa is a Chirabugufi Imana. We will resist the devil. And the devil will run out of Africa. Never to trouble us again. Now listen to me. On the noon of January the 20th in the year 2009, when the first president of the United States of America that had African blood in him was sworn in. Sworn in as the 44th present president of the United States of America. The whole of Africa rejoiced. I also rejoiced that somebody with African blood could be promoted by God to take the seat of what is supposedly the most powerful seat in the world. But the reason for my own joy was different from other people. Approximately 238 miles away from Washington where President Obama was sworn in, approximately 238 miles as well as 93 years earlier in a location called the Bronx Zoo. The Bronx Zoo. Zoo where you go and look at animals. Otter Benga. A citizen of Congo had been kidnapped from Africa. He was a pygmy of the Umbuti tribe, I'm told. Muri Congo, Avamu Boko, Gitwa Avambuti. Will you believe that 238 miles and 93 years earlier from where President Obama was sworn in? Ese ushobora kwemera yuko ahantu Obama yarahijwe kuba president haciye ibirometero 1293 ndetse n'imyaka 193 mbere y'iyo tariki yarahijwe This Congolese man was displayed inside a zoo next to monkeys and orangutans 
ushobora kwemera ko uwo mugabo w'umunyekongo bari baramushize muri iyo zu ari ruhande rw'inkende ndetse n'utundi dukoko abantu baje kumureba abazungu baje kumureba nk'indi nyamasko bavumbuye that was not the first zoo in which Otabenga was being displayed in America. He had been displayed in Missouri before that. This was the year 1906. For Africa to arise, Africa cannot afford to forget stupidly. That because of this our skin color, we had been put in zoological exhibitions in places like Spain, in places like Britain, in France, in Germany and many nations of the world. They sharpen Otabenga's teeth to look like a cannibal. People from all over America paid money to come and look at him inside the cage. And they said No wonder on the 20th of March 1916 Otabenga committed suicide Otabenga yari yahuye in the United States of America rather than to continue living a life of degradation a life of shame a life that God did not prepare any being to live and that's why I'm going to call all of us to arise first of all tonight and join me in prayer. Not only Otabenga, but many Africans who were abused throughout the history of mankind. Through the pain, the humiliation, and the suffering, they cried out to the God of the heavens. Otabenga's cry arose to the heavens as he committed suicide. And the God of heaven heard the cry of Otabenga. That's why I want you to stand to your feet tonight. Let us for a few minutes lift up our hands to God. The God who heard the cry of the Congolese beat me. The God who sent liberty to us in Africa. Can we lift up our hands in prayer? Can we lift up our voice in prayer? Let's lift up our hands to the God that delivered Joseph from his brothers. Let's cry out in gratitude to the God who elevated the same Joseph and put him over his brothers. Let's 
Let us pray tonight that so shall the destiny of Africa be. Lift up your voice to the God who delivered Moses from his enemies. Cry out to the one who protected Moses and hid him in a place where the enemy could not believe. Yes. Let us thank the God who made Moses to become a deliverer. God will raise deliverers for Africa. Let us begin to thank the God who listened to the cries of Hannah. Who listened to the tongues of Penina? And God who beautified Hannah at the end of the day. God will beautify Africa once more. Let us remember the God who heard the cry of the widow at Nain. Let us glorify the name of Jesus that he heard the cry of that widow at Nain. When she was mourning because of her only son, and God brought that child back to life. Bible tells us that God listens to the cry of the young ravens that are hungry. And God Himself has had mercy upon us. In Jesus' mighty name. As somebody shouted, Amen. Somebody shouted, Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bible says to everything there's a season. And a time to every purpose under heaven. Apostle Gitwaza. And all those who join hands with you from Rwanda. From Congo. Burundi, from Burundi, all over Africa our season is now our time has gone if you believe it shout hallelujah praise the Lord praise the Lord now tonight I want to say something to us I don't want us to be naive the cry of Otabenga will never be in vain. Allow me to introduce something to you tonight. And permit me to stand on the shoulder of all the speakers who have been preaching wonderfully to us since this conference started. Professor Anibog mentioned that if Africa would arise, it means that the sons, the Africans, must become sons indeed. Professor Vincent Yari Gishije, and I've gone on Niba Africane Guhaguruka, Ichene Ava and Abashite. Yesterday, the man of God from South Africa. Father established the glory of God with some precious insights from the presence of God. I want to warn us tonight that if Africa is going to arise, we have to pay attention to the word of the Lord. Submit yourself to God, Africa. Gandu chirima na Africa we. Before we can resist the devil. Mbere yuko turguanya umanzi satani tu gomba kugandu chirima na. Will somebody mind me if I tell you that in 1950 was that 56 or 57 the Ghanaian independence? Niwa niwe shari kondo mvaga na yara wa nyugi jenge mojo mbichi mana magani chena na mirongo tano na gatanda tu niwa niwe. The generation of Kwame Unkuruma rejoiced when they got their independence. 
abari bari kumwe na kwa menkuruma cyangwa se bagenzi be urubyaro rwe barishimye kuko babonye ubwigenge they thought it was time for africa to arise icyo gihe bibwiraga ko igihe cy africa guhaguruka cyageze in fact from january alone to the end of 1960 about 19 countries in africa gained their independence kugeza mu mwaka w'igihumbi kimwe na 1960 hari ibihugu byinshi byo muri afrika byari bimaze kubona ubwigenge almost 60 years after the rejoicing of nkuruma in ghana haciye imyaka 60 ghana yishimye we look on africa today turareba africa and what do we see does it give us reason to believe that the, the rejoicing in 1956 was justified? This time around, as we join hands with you in Rwanda, across the whole of Africa, I want to put it on record tonight that if Africa is to arise we must not be unaware of the devil's devices and more than any other satanic device there is a special one that I have discovered from the year 2000 when I began to study the problem of Nigeria both from the spirit and the practical I made a discovery that the spiritual root of all the problems of Africa is the same problem a few years ago God spoke to me and I drove from Lagos to Ghana I was shaking my head as I was crossing border to border I was asking questions from God who divided us we are practically the same people all the way from Nigeria not only to Ghana but all the way to Rwanda if you believe that shout hallelujah then I found out something there is a spiritual device that is being used against Africa I would, I would like to describe it as the devil's arithmetic. Rejoice with me tonight, Rwanda. Because this time around, because of our children's children, Africa shall arise. Africa I said Africa shall arise. Africa I said Africa shall arise. Africa Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What is this devil's arithmetic? I found it out by the wisdom of God. It's a terrible satanic device. Sometimes it wears disguises. Sometimes it wears disguise of religion. Other times it will wear the disguise of philosophy. At times it can even have a financial disguise. But 
it is an ancient device. It has been used against Africa for a long time. While I was studying this satanic device, under the instruction of the Holy Spirit, God took me to the book of Genesis. Chapter 15. In Genesis chapter 15, I discovered something that God revealed to Abraham almost 1400 years before it started. At that time, Abraham was worried. He said, I have no son. Lord, I have no son. And God told him, come out and count the stars. And when he counted the stars, his faith was restored. Now God said, Abraham, let me now talk to you. And in those days, everybody knew that sacrifice technology is the way you reach heaven. So Abraham prepared this sacrifice. He laid it before the Lord. And then the Bible tells us that a deep sleep came upon Abraham. As Abraham was in that sleep, a horrible darkness an evil darkness despair and despondency came upon Abraham and, and then God spoke he told Abraham something I want you to know that something terrible is going to enter the earth and it is a new form of slavery there used to be slavery in the world before but this new one that is coming it's more terrible than any slavery you have ever seen before. It's going to be an industrialized, self-replicating form of slavery. It, it has never been seen in this earth before. But when that slavery comes, the grandfather will pass it to the son. Son will pass it to the grandson. Grandson will continue to pass it. Because it's a satanic form of slavery. And this satanic slavery is so terrible that no human being can deliver you except God himself. And God said to Abraham, 400 years after your children, your seed have been in captivity, I, the most high God who hear the cries of my own, I will hear your children's cry. I will come and deliver them. The God who heard the cry of the Hebrews in Egypt. The God who heard the cry of Otabenga in America. God, hear our cry tonight. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now listen to me. 
when a terrible form of bondage of slavery comes that can only be unlocked spiritually no matter how much you struggle on your own except God helps you there's no way you will escape that form of slavery this is what I call the devil's arithmetic there's an equation that has come against Africa and that equation comes directly from Satan. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying tonight? And only God can deliver Africa completely. And that is why he has allowed us to see these revelations. All over Africa. It is the same devil's arithmetic. But we shall beat it in Jesus' name. I didn't hear you shout amen. Okay, somebody is saying to me here that I don't know what this devil's arithmetic is. Let me introduce it to you from not far but from near. Please, if I make any mistake about history, forgive me. But I will not make any mistake in the spirit. Now hear this carefully. Lieutenant General Romeo Dallaire Lieutenant General Romeo Dallaire he was able to enter a place few white men have ever been before. Lieutenant General Romeo Dallaire was commanding peacekeeping forces in this country. One of the few white men Whoever has seen the devil's arithmetic face to face. Maybe the world does not know that when he left Rwanda, he attempted to commit suicide. I must confess to you that there are many people all over the world that if they ever have an understanding of the devilish arithmetic that has been working around them, they will even try to commit suicide. But I am glad that the Lieutenant General did not die. He lived to write a book called Shake Hands with the Devil. Shaking Hands with the Devil. Easily he could have called it face to face with the devil's arithmetic. I want to say something here tonight. And I want you to correct me if I'm wrong. I was told that in ancient times. Rwanda was much bigger than what it is today. If that is true, can I hear you shout hallelujah? God will restore Rwanda. God will restore Africa. In the name of Jesus. Now follow me. Follow me. I'm told that we did not only have a mighty nation, I'm told you had about 18 communities. That's, that is what history tells me. I'm, I'm told that the paradise called Rwanda had only one language. 
bambiye yuko ingobyi y'u Rwanda cyangwa se ubusitani ari bwo Rwanda bavuga gurura imirumwe gusa I'm told that even in the days of people like King Musinga bambiye ko no mu gihe cy'imyaka umwami Musinga yayoboraga if there was any trouble at all iyo habaga ikibazo maybe somebody stole somebody's goat wende umuntu akiba ihene ya mugenzi we maybe there was one prop, small problem somewhere hakaba ikibazo ahantu runaka i'm told that Rwanda had never seen bloodshed on a satanic scale in the ancient days nabwiwe yuko urwanda rutigeze rubona kuvusha maraso nk'ibyabaye muri genocide if that is true i want to hear you shout hallelujah now something interesting happened that i want us to discuss now all of a sudden in 1884 and 1885 the devil's arithmetic moved upon a man and the leader of Germany called a meeting and present at that meeting it was not only Germany Austria Hungary was there Belgium was there. Denmark was there. France was there. The United Kingdom was there. Italy was there. Netherlands was there. Portugal was there. Portugal Spain was there. Spain Sweden, Norway was there. Sweden, Norway Ottoman Empire was re represented there. And Ottoman Empire, Ottoman And the United States of America was there. Why did they gather for this meeting? Without any African present at that meeting. Somebody said, why is the man of God talking history? If you don't like history, it means you don't like the Bible. Because God likes to keep records. And when men read the records, men call it history. Your name is recorded in the book of life. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That table, they call that table the scramble for Africa. Ah. Ah. Satan is a devil. No African at the meeting. All these people sat down and began to divide Africa. Like a mother dividing a bowl of matoke. Cutting it into portions. Nobody from Rwanda was represented at that meeting. But in 1895, I'm told that the Germans arrived here. And mysteriously by devil's arithmetic this nation became their own all of a sudden mind you the reason why I'm speaking English today is because at that same table based on 400 forged documents the British got Nigeria the French were fighting with them had the French won 
I will be speaking French to you now. But I'm speaking in English now. Because the devil's arithmetic gave Nigeria to the British. But when it came to Rwanda, three countries were struggling to take Rwanda, to steal Rwanda. Without the permission of the Rwandans. Belgium, Germany, and Britain. At the end of the day, the Germans won. And without the permission of one single Rwanda, they became the so called owners of Rwanda. Have you ever seen this kind of stealing before in your life? Even a thief has conscience. This one is the devil's arithmetic. Listen to me. After the First World War 1914, because Germany attacked Belgium, I'm told that Belgium came and took over Rwanda. And they own Rwanda as if they are the owners. If you were not listening before, if you are not listening before, start listening to what I'm saying to you now. When the Belgians arrived, they began to do some strange things. Things that Africans can never understand. How can you enter a nation with only one language? And then look at the people what you did not do to your own people at home inspired by Satan who came to Africa and then they said we must divide the country into three. Oh, I, my first visit to Rwanda was in, was in uh, 2006 and then I came again last year and with my friend Bishop Olale last year we went to visit the so-called genocide center. Sadness was upon me when I entered. As I listened to the history of what these people did to our people, they divided a country that is not divided. The way Satan tried to divide heaven. And when I was asking people how did they divide, most people told me, well, if your color is like European, rubbish. If I give you a secret on what they call the devil's arithmetic, you will know that that was never how it was done. If time permits me, I will give you the spiritual secret behind that. But the truth is that if you had 10,000 more, just less than 10 count Hutu. Hutu. and I think some people are not even interested at all so, hallelujah hallelujah listen to me when the Belgians came, they, they began to give identity card to Africans. Who are you to come from Belgium? To come to Africa and be giving ID card to Africans. Who are you to do that? You need to come and apologize. You need to come and kneel down. 
You need to come and say sorry. For the terrible things that you did. Listen to this. Because it was the devil's arithmetic. Africans didn't know what they were doing. What they did to you here. They did it in Ghana. They did it in South Africa. They did it in Nigeria. They did it all over Africa. They turned brother against brother. In ancient times, maybe somebody stole somebody's goat. But all of a sudden, they divide you. Now you will think you are the one. But while Africa was sleeping, they begin to put ideas into your mind. They tell one side, we are superior to those ones. The same devil will tell the other side, don't mind those ones. They think they are superior. Year after year, the hatred was rising. The vision was rising. By 1962, I read the speech of the first president of this country. Like as if we are guinea pigs. Like the use the devil's arithmetic. Release demons where there was no demons before. And then Africa began to fight Africa. A fight that was never there before. The Prime Minister said, There's another tribe here. It's as if they came from another planet. We are not related to them. Are you sure? Mm. If you ask your great, 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 great grandfather, will he agree with you? Somebody must be wrong. Let me ask you a question. How many years does it take a lie to become the truth? If I plant a lie today, will it become the truth after 10 years? How come nobody's answering me? Either yes or no, answer me one. Can a lie become a truth after 200 years? If I put an evil padlock and time passes, ten years, twenty years, fifty years, hundred years, will the padlock open itself? I can't hear your answer. Listen to me, Africa. Africa Hear the wisdom of God. Nobody is coming to open that padlock. We have to open it by ourselves. We have to open it by ourselves. In the name of Jesus, we shall open it. Now hear me. You left us in Rwanda. You planted war against us. And then the harvest came. And when the harvest came, you planted a seed in the early 1800s. 
The tree of hatred was growing. It was growing. Then the major harvest came in 1994. Blood everywhere. Brother against brother. Why were they fighting? They thought they knew. I stand the of God tonight. Rwandans did not know why brothers were fighting brothers. The answer is hidden in the devil's arithmetic. Now listen to this very well. When brother turned against brother, they ran away. They left us. Satan is a deceiver. They planted the trouble. They watered the trouble. When the harvest came, the Belgians in the so called peacekeeper were the first to run away. Then they came back in 1996. 1996. Ah, this is genocide. Ah, we have to take everybody to God. Where are the brothers who killed the brothers? Oh, yeah, I love you. Come, 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 come. Beloved, the prison of Kigali, 1930, is housing the wrong people. You don't understand what I'm saying yet. Hear me this. The only thing those people were guilty of is what the speaker from South Africa said yesterday. We were foolish. We were stupid. We believe them. We allow them to come amongst us. To defend us. To plan the devil's arithmetic. Do you know who is supposed to be in that prison? The grandchildren. The great great grandchildren of the Belgians, the Germans, and the people who entered Africa and planted an evil seed and turned brother against brother. They are the ones who are supposed to be there. Some of you don't believe me. I will just give you one more example. How many more minutes do I have? Please signal me when the time is up. Good. The moment my time is up, I drop the microphone and I move. We came here to give you a word. You will either be glad, sad, or mad. But you, you have to respond to the word of God. Now listen to me carefully. Lift up your Bible. If you have one with you here. And I want you to say with me. This Bible is not a religious book. Now put it down. Let me give you a little announcement. The Bible is not a book about rituals. It's not about religious rites. The Bible is the record of God's will. The greatest revelation of the Bible is based on Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And when Jesus came to this world, he did not bring any religion. 
He came to announce that the kingdom of God is now at hand. If you believe that, shout amen. You don't understand what I'm saying yet. But he that is set free by the Son is the only one that is truly free. When Jesus Christ came, he did not come to teach us any religion. When he came, he spoke as the Son of God. He acted the way the Son of God must act. He lived the way a Son of God must live. He faced death the way a Son of God must face death. He arose the way a son of God must arise. And when he was going, he left us a legacy. He said, I am the way. The way to what? I'm the way for the Rwandan, the Nigerian, the Ghanaian, the South African. To get a new birth, a new spirit, a new language, a new vision. Behold, all things have become new. You know the interesting thing? He made the way for you to be like him. For me to be like him. Today, if I really accept Jesus Christ, I must be able to talk the way a son of God talks. I must act the way a son of God acts. I must speak the way a son of God speaks. I must face issues the way a son of God faces issues. The Bible says, Beloved, now, when, now are we the sons of God. Now, why did I bring this in? Religion cannot help Africa. The kingdom of God is what can help Africa. Religion cannot help Rwanda. Religion cannot help anybody. Go to the history of mankind. The only thing religion has done is to create wars to divide people and demand bloodshed. This is why Africa we are now in the position to demand certain things. What is Africa demanding? In the days of slave trade, it was not religion that delivered us. It was the kingdom of God. In Africa, we know the difference between religion and the kingdom of God. Beloved, this is the word of the Lord. Now hear this. If there's going to be a new birth for nations, I'm going to share one thing now and I'm going to leave this place. We must raise sons of God like Professor Anipoku said. Not only sons of God, but the sons of God must have what the Bible calls the mind of Christ. I will be talking about that tomorrow morning. What is the mind of Christ? A mind processes thoughts. 
God said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. As the heaven is far above the earth, my thoughts are greater than your own. There was only one mind can take the thoughts of God. Because the solutions of God is based on the thoughts of God. And the only person who can carry the thoughts of God are the sons of God who have the mind of Christ. When Nkrumah and uh, all of them were rejoicing for for the rebirth of Africa. Martin Luther King Jr. came from America. Martin Luther King Jr. America. I read his speech, what he said to Nkrumah. None of it was obeyed. None was obeyed. This was a prophet of God that God sent from America. Martin Luther King said. We know about bondage in America too. If you want to be free indeed, the sons of God in Rwanda must arise. And then it shall be well. Now quickly let me show you a little secret. Later on I'm going to tell you something. In another session. Don't blame the Germans. Don't blame the Belgians. The devil's arithmetic started in Africa. We are the ones. Ancient Egypt was full of black rulers. Don't mind anybody who tells you that pharaohs of ancient Egypt were white people. They, they were blacks. And they received the devil's arithmetic from Satan. No other civilization in the history of this world has ever lasted 3,000 years. Egypt lasted 3,000 years. Only the wisdom of God could deliver the Hebrews from the hand of the Egyptians. Now watch this. I close with this one. I need to borrow somebody. Can I borrow you, sir? Madam, can I borrow you? Just for a minute. Please stand like that. Stand this way. Please, madam. Please stand. Now, stand. Now, Let me borrow you as well. Now, now watch this carefully. Without the mind of Christ, we will not be able to decode the devil's arithmetic. If we don't do it, this country will not move forward. Africa will not move forward. Africa you are the light of the world. You will shine in Jesus' name. Now listen. In America, when they began to take black people as slaves, the formula for the devil's arithmetic had been passing from evil generation to evil generation. The, the colony of Virginia discovered that the Africans were not behaving like slaves. The, the colony of Virginia. Because man was made in God's image. God gave man dominion over all things. But God did not give man dominion over man. Watch what happened and think about this as you go home tonight. The devil's arithmetic. When the Americans saw these black people are rebelling, we punish them. We do all sorts. But they refuse to work for us. And we are not making profit out of slavery. They invited from West Indies. 
Batumiye muri A man called William Lynch. And when he got to the Americans, William Lynch, William Lynch. William Lynch. When he got to the to America, to Virginia, William Lynch Virginia, America. He rebuked the Americans. That since the Roman Empire where they were using devil's arithmetic you have been wasting raw materials this wastage is too much do you know who the raw material was? African slaves and then Willie Lynch told the Americans I'm going to teach you a formula now how to handle Africans I will give you a guarantee of 300 years if I teach you the devil's arithmetic they will become useful slaves and servants for at least 300 years now, listen to the secret a normal man will never be a slave. To turn a man into a slave, you must use spiritual engineering. Break him from his normal state. Turn him into something like a beast. Not exactly a beast. Something like a beast. And get him ready for what? The day of the beast. The number of his name. 666. Six, six. How do we do that? They say. He said it's very simple. Where is the African that is refusing to be a slave? The one that everybody is looking up to. The one rebelling that saying I'm a man. Get me their champion. Look like a champion, sir. <laughs> oh, this is the champion. Now cover his body with tar. Put feathers all over his body. They will be laughing. They think it's a joke. Let all the women be there. Let the children be there. Now that you have brought this man out, you put tie on his body. You put feathers all over his body. Tie one leg to a horse. Tie the second leg to another horse. They will still be laughing. Set fire to him. When you set his body on fire, they will stop laughing. As he is burning. As he's crying, as he's in pain, let the two horses steer him into the Make sure they are looking at him. What is the message for the woman? If you are trusting in this man for your salvation, see how we have broken him completely. Therefore, in your whole life, don't ever look up to men again. Because they can never bring salvation. What has he just done to this man? He uses as an example to break the spirit of all other men. They, they don't want it to happen to them. So when this man is buried, or thrown away, start beating them. When you are smiling, beat them. When you are, when you are frowning, beat them. Don't let them know how you are. Just make sure they are afraid of you. Now what is going to happen to this, to this woman who saw the champion 
handled like that. When she becomes pregnant, and it is a boy, how will she bring up that boy? Do you think she will bring up the boy to be a champion? This is engineering. It's satanic engineering. She will bring up the boy to be a complete idiot. So that what happened to this man must never happen to her son. What if she's pregnant with a daughter? She will bring up the daughter to bring up the other children the way she's bringing up her own children. The men must be idiots. And the ladies must be all over them. And I can tell you the man said for at least 300 years. Generation after generation. This is what is going to be happening to the woman. The woman becomes the economic unit. Now do this. Break this woman very well. The way you break a horse. As for this man, come, come, come. Move him away from you. He is a man, so he hates you. If he has opportunity, he will kill the white man. Don't let him move or live near you. But let her live in the house. Let her be close to you. Now, make sure of one thing. When you allow them to mate, there must be no husband and wife. Mate them the way you mate animals. So that when a woman is pregnant, you cannot say that is the father. Because the baby cannot belong to a family. Family is from God. It's not meant for animals. So destroy families. What's the next thing? Find out their language. Oh, Rwanda, I'm so proud of Rwanda. Everywhere we turn to, we see your language. We see your language. In Nigeria, we see English more than any other language. But in Rwanda here, we see your language everywhere. You are not ashamed of your language. God bless you, Rwanda. Now listen. listen. Step two. Destroy her language. She mustn't teach the children her language. Because the language will make them to remember their history. They begin to remember that they were people before. But if you take away their language, you take away their history. And when you have done that, there's a next step. This is a wicked one. Are you hearing me, Africa? You take this woman, a black woman, beautiful black woman, and then look for a white man. But who looks like a white man there? Come. You look like a white man. Praise now watch this. Black. White. When they have a child. Please move us ahead, madam. What would the child be? Half cast. Then begin to engineer them. Don't only produce half cast. Also produce quarter cast. Produce one eighth cast. Produce the one that is 90% black. 
10% white. Then produce the one that is 90% white, 10% black. Satanic genetic engineering. But control their numbers. This black woman has a history. The white man on the other extreme has a history. Everybody in between does not have any history. So when you remove the history of the black woman, you invent a history for all these people. If she talks about her history, they will fight her. Are you listening to this? Devil's arithmetic. Somebody is saying, does it work? Go and look at America till today. 200 plus years after this arithmetic was introduced. Go home and Google black doll, white doll test. In the 1960s, they took two children, white and black. They gave them dolls, black doll, white doll, the same. Then they asked the children, which one is beautiful? White girl pointed to the white doll. They asked the black child, which one is beautiful? He points to the white doll. Which one is ugly? The black child pointed to the black doll. Which, which one is stupid? The white girl pointed to the black doll. The black children pointed to the black doll. 200 and something years after. This was in the Devil's arithmetic will be working on the ground. If you don't have the wisdom to carry it. I'm going to stop tonight on this one. Why am I stopping on this one? They said Rwandans were divided because some people look European. Was it by magic? It was done by genetic engineering. Introducing white blood gradually. Until some African noses become sharp. Introducing it. Introducing it producing exactly what you want. And then guess what? Tell the ones that are light in color that they are better than the ones. They are better than the ones that are black. Malcolm X Malcolm X in America made the mistake of following religion looking for solution. He did not know the son of God. But he was smart enough. Stephen Biko of South Africa too. He too noticed it. What's this man's name? That man wearing glasses from Congo that they killed. What's his name now? Lumumba, Patrice Lumumba. Patrice Lumumba, now we are They were suspecting this devil's arithmetic. But the moment they see that any black person begins to understand it, they won't jail you the way they jailed Mandela. They killed that person. Because that knowledge is dangerous. So the light complexion one in America called Malcolm X. Felt he was better than his darker brothers. Until his eyes opened. Beloved, there will never be blood in the streets of Rwanda again. This is where I stop it tonight. No more blood.
more bloodshed. But listen to me. Don't pay attention to those people. Because once you make the mistake of being this product, a black man cannot think if you have been used under satanic engineering your brain does not work as well as it normally supposed to work when I went to the memorial most of the people killed in this country they were killed wearing European clothes Let's stand to our feet. 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 To our feet. Lift up your hands to the heavens if you will. Let's stand to our feet. After Benga committed suicide, he cried to God. God has heard him. We must be free. Free to prosper. Free to be established. Rwanda is the womb. Africa must be free. Lift up your hands and begin to call on the God of the heavens for me. Cry out in the mighty name of Jesus.